it's, it's very difficult for them to come to the stage of pure emotional service that we observe in Vritrasura. In this material world, there are as many atom, living entities as atoms. Among these living entities, a very few are human beings, and among them, few are interested in following religious principles. You see that, right? <laughs> few people are actually interested in following religious principles. Thanks for O oh, best of the Brahman Shukade Goswami, out of many persons who follow religious principles, only a few desire liberation from the material world. Among many thousands who desire liberation, one may actually achieve liberation, giving up material attachment to society, friendship, love, country, home, wife, and children. And among many thousands of such liberated persons, one who can understand the true meaning of liberation is very rare. Does this remind anyone of the verse from Bhagavad Gita? Yeah, there's a one. Ah, yes, yes. Manushyanam Sastresu, Sastresu. Uh, I don't know the whole verse, but yeah. Manushyanam Sastresu. The idea is that out of many uh, thousands of men, one may endeavor for perfection. And out of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me the truth. So it's very similar here. So Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita are very aligned, right? Same points are being repeated. So this is what the focus of this class is today, is the rareness of devotees. How uh, exalted and uh, rare devotees are in this world. And even amongst human beings, which are already rare, there are few who are in the mode of goodness. And out of those in the mode of goodness, a few aspire for liberation. And out of those few who even aspire for liberation or want to follow religious principles, only a few actually achieve liberation, achieve perfection. And out of those who achieve perfection, hardly one uh, understands Krishna to be the Supreme Personality of Godhead and devotional service to Krishna to be uh, the ultimate goal of life. So, continuing with this theme, we're going to read the text 5 in Sanskrit. And Narayana <laughs> Narayana Parayana, 
a person who has concluded that Narayana is supreme, Sudhudhava is very rarely found, Prashanta, fully vampire, Atma, Bhuzmai, Bodhishwa, out of the mysteries, Ati, Ile, Mahamune, Oyeshe. Srila Viswanath Chakravarti Thakur, Thakur gives the following purport to this verse, simply desiring mukti or liberation is insufficient. One must become factual, factually liberated. When one understands the futility of materialistic way of life, one becomes advanced in knowledge and therefore he situated himself in the Vanaprastha order unattached to family, wife and children. One should then further pro progress to the platform of sannyasa, the actual renounced order, never to fall again and be afflicted by materialistic life. Even though one desires to be liberated, this does not mean he is liberated. Only rarely is someone liberated. Indeed, although many men take sannyasa, to become liberated because of their imperfections, they again become attached to women, materialistic, material activities, social welfare, work, and so on. Yeah. 
Such persons do not know that Krishna's body is not material. There is no distinction between Krishna's body and his soul. But because less intelligent men see Krishna as a human being, they deride him. They cannot imagine how a person like Krishna could be the origin of everything. Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Bhajana. Such persons are described as Mukasha, baffled in their hopes. Whatever they desire for the the future will be baffled. Even if they apparently engage in, de in devotional service, they are described as mokasha because they ultimately desire to merge into the Brahman effulgence. Those who aspire to be elevated to heavenly planets by devotional service will also be frustrated because this is not the result of devotional service. However, they are also given a chance to engage in devotional service and be purified, as stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17. Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truth, truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who relishes his message, message, messages which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Unless the dirt within the core of one's heart is cleansed away, one cannot become a pure devotee. Therefore, the word sudur lava, very rarely found, is used in this verse. Not only among hundreds and thousands, but among millions of perfectly liberated souls, a pure devotee is hardly ever found. Therefore, the words kotish api are used herein. Srila Madhava Acharya gives the following quotations from the Tantra. Stages of Ashtanga Yoga and they meditate on the Lord within the heart and they 
realize that they're also a spirit soul there situated in the heart, and they have nothing to do with this material world. And uh, the goal of both the yanis and the yogis is liberation. But the bhaktas, the devotees, uh, they also, we also realize that we're not the body, and that we have nothing to do with this material world, but we take it a step beyond that. Okay? It's not, our goal is not just to become free from repeated birth and death and free from the miseries of this material world, but our goal is to serve Krishna. And the happiness that comes from serving Krishna purely uh, is much, much better than uh, the happiness of liberation. And there's three kinds of happiness. Happiness from material sense pleasure, happiness from impersonal liberation, and happiness from pure devotional service. So the happiness from material sense gratification is compared to a drop of water in the desert, <laughs> Prabhupada says. So if you're in a desert, it's hot, it's dry, you're parched and you know dying of thirst, and then you get a little drop of water in your hand. <laughs> and you get some hope that, wow, I have some water here, this is going to save me. But before you can even sip the drop of water, it evaporates <laughs> because it's so hot and dry in the desert. So that's material happiness. There's some glittering, you know, some hope, maybe some promises that if you do this, if you get that, if you go there, if you, you'll be happy. But we don't even, we never taste it. You know, we never taste it. It's just, it's just the hope. It's like the carrot, you know, in front of the donkey. The donkey's walking, trying to get I'm going to get that carrot. I'm going to get that carrot. And he's working like an ass, walking all day, carrying happy loads, and he never gets the carrot. And he doesn't, and he's got these blinders on, so he doesn't see that all along the roadside there are lush green fields, you know. And if he could just stop chasing that hare, he could enjoy all kinds of food there. <laughs> so that's uh, the ridiculous situation of someone who's chasing after the zero mountain. So it's a very low standard of pleasure. And so the drop of water in the desert. Then the happiness of liberation, the Brahma, Brahmananda is compared to the water that's contained in the hoof print of a calf. So like a calf is walking along the field and it's a, it's a, there's some mud there, then the foot sinks down, the foot sinks down to the mud, and then the rain shows up that little hoof print, and the, that's the amount of water. So it's a little better than a drop. It's something, uh, but it's not much, right? It's not much at all. Compared to material happiness, it looks amazing because there's so many drops in that Wow, it's practically unlimited compared to material happiness. So impersonalists, they get very uh, excited about the happiness of Brahma and because compared to material happiness, it's like, wow, this is next, this is like the next level, this is the ultimate happiness. But uh, the happiness that is available to a loving relationship with Krishna and rendering pure devotional service to Krishna is like an ocean. <laughs> so what to speak of the drop? to speak of even the water in the footprint of a cat. Whole ocean, it's like unlimited, ever-increasing uh, happiness of your devotional service. So that's what these yanis and uh, yogis and materialists don't know. They don't know that there's this amazing higher standard of happiness which is unlimited, which goes on increasing forever. So that's what anybody who's truly wise in this world is searching. We experience that happiness by giving happiness to Krishna. And that's the secret of happiness. When Krishna is pleased, that then we'll be happy. So this uh, Sudurlava, very rare, is one of the uh, is a characteristic of devotees, and it's a characteristic of devotees and only devotees, because materialists are like a dime a dozen, very common, right? Uh, even those who have attained the liberation from the material world, uh, they're a little more rare, but still, there's many of them. And there's all different kinds of them, right? And we were just talking about the impersonalists, the, the yogis, yanis. So, in nectar devotion, the three different, uh, the six characteristics of pure devotional service are given. And so the first two, the two that appear at the stage of sadhana bhakti, the nunavataya, so at the one, the two characteristics of devotional service that appear at the stage of sadhana bhakti are klesh agni 
and Subala. So Klesha Agni means uh, that the removal of material distress, no more material distress. And Subala means that you, your life becomes auspicious. So these two characteristics uh, are attainable by any transcendentalists. Okay, so even impersonalists, even yogis, uh, by transcending uh, material uh, activities and realizing that they're spirit souls, they become aloof from material distress. So they don't suffer in the same way that uh, materialists do. And also their life becomes auspicious because it's on the spiritual uh, platform. There's a lot of goodness or transcendental goodness. They have a pure life, a clean life, a blessed life, a very auspicious life. But then it's not until the stage, and devotees also, right? Devotees also. So these are the, we experience these at sad, in the beginning of sadhana bhakti, that we get free from material miseries to a large degree. Many of us are suffering a lot, and that's actually what brought us to Krishna consciousness, is like realizing the miseries of this world. And then as soon as we come to bhakti, we move into the ashram, it's like, peaceful life, you know, so much better. And it becomes auspicious, so much more, such a bright future. Thank you. 
that's the nectar for which we are always anxious, right? Like what you talked about, how she just she shouts like that. And the other characteristic at that stage is Sri Krishna Karshini, which means that the devotion of the devotee attracts <coughs> Krishna. So Krishna is all attractive, but Krishna is attracted by pure devotion. Right? And so Krishna is called Madan Mohi, Madan Moha, which means the uh, person who bewilders Cupid. He attracts the mind of even Cupid, who is it? Cupid is attracting the mind of everyone. But Krishna is attracting the mind of Cupid. But then Srimati Radharani, who is the best devotee, she's called Mada Mohan Mohini. That she bewilders the mind of that person who bewilders the mind of Cupid. Who bewilders the mind of everyone. <laughs> so uh, the position of the devotee is so exalted that, uh, that the devotion, pure devotional service, at the stage of Prema Bhakti, attracts even Krishna. So that's very, very rare. Like even Baba Bhakti is Sudurlava, it's very rare. The Prema Bhakti is Su Sudurlava, it's very, very rare. And so that's our goal. That's our goal. The Yamis and the Impersonals, the Yogis, they're going for liberation. We're not interested in liberation. We're interested in pure devotional service. We're interested in uh, having pure love for Krishna, and engaging in six loving exchanges with Krishna and his pure devotees in the spiritual world. Yeah. And it's interesting that even Gandhis and yogis, some of them, they actually perform devotional service, but uh, as a means to the end of liberation. And they, just, they just take it as the means. Uh, but the, the, the result that they're trying to achieve through the means of devotional service, like worshiping the deity, chanting mantras, and like that, is liberation. So at the end, uh, Kabi gives this example that uh, they climb a ladder uh, to get to a certain, you know, to get to the, the roof of the building, and when they get to the roof, they throw away the ladder. They don't need the ladder anymore because they're there, right? The ladder is useless when they've already gotten it, and they don't want to go back down, they just want to stay there. So, uh, Kabi gives that example that they use devotional service like a ladder, but when they get to liberation, they throw away, they, they stop doing devotional service. One time Papa did a very dramatic illustration of this uh, when he was with his devotees there at Ayaka when they were walking near the Ganga. And so they walked up this, they were going up, they had to get up this embankment. So one of Prabhupada's disciples uh, uh, was, uh, he was holding his hand, he was standing on the top of the embankment and he went up there quickly to, to be able to offer his hand to Prabhupada and help him up. And so Prabhupada got his hand and then the devotee, like Prabhupada was walking up, the devotee was pulling him. And as soon as Prabhupada got to the top of the, uh, like the top of the, uh, the bank, then he, he he was still holding the hand of the devotee, and he went, <laughs> and he threw the devotee down. And the devotee was like, he was like lying on his back on the ground down there, like, like what the heck, Prabhupada? He didn't say that, but he was like, why? You know? And Prabhupada said, this is what the, the Maya bodies do. <laughs> this is what the Maya bodies do. They use the spiritual master, they use the process of devotional service, to get to an exalted platform, the transcendental platform, and as soon as they get there, they kick him away, they throw him away. They, don't, they think they don't need him anymore. So very, you can see how it's very offensive. That's why Prabhupada says that these, uh, these uh, Maya bodies, Maya body Krishna Aparani, right? The Maya bodies are offensive because they, they offend Krishna by just basically exploiting the process of devotional service and then they Why doesn't he realize his name? 
Or why doesn't he reveal his name, form, qualities, and pastimes to them? So I asked this question in the class one time. The devotee said, he doesn't reveal that, all that to them because they're not interested. They just don't want to know. They don't want a, a loving relationship with God. They just, what they're interested in is the things that God can give them. Right? And actually, I was just, uh, the other day I was chanting in the temple upstairs and I was reading some of those little papers that um, the Lord had offered to drag it off. And it's like, it was actually like <laughs> kind of discouraging because uh, a lot of them, most of them, or at least half of them, I didn't read all of them, but many of them would say, I just, you know, Dear Lord, please, you know, I hate my job. Please don't do that. <laughs> I really want to do that. Please do that for me. Or, you know, it's just like material requests. <laughs> One of them say, like, I want to start gym again. <laughs> gym, going to the gym? <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, come on, guys. <laughs> Here's the Lord. He can give you liberation. He can give you pure, pure devotional service. He can bring you back home, back to Godhead. And you want to go to the gym? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that 
Krishna's God, they don't care if Krishna's God, the, the concept of Krishna's godliness just doesn't enter their consciousness. They just love Krishna for who he is, and not for what he can do or what he has done, or because he's glorious, or because he's wealthy, or because he's Bhagavan. They, they, just, they just love Krishna because Krishna is wonderful, because he's charming, because he's sweet, because he's Krishna. The second, the second one is Mahim Jnana Yukta Prema. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Good. So, uh, we, you know, we, in Bhagavatam, Krishna has so many things that he would be so free, and we are practicing Sadhana Bhakti right now. Mm -hmm. So, what, so, let's, let's say, So, Mahim Jnana Yukta Prema, love mixed with knowledge of unrelated reverential worship. Okay, so love mixed with knowledge of reverential worship. By good fortune, he met a devotee, Narada Muni, who said, okay, you have this material desire, 
If you want to fulfill it, this is what you do. Worship Krishna. Chant the names of Krishna. <laughs> and so Guru Maharaj was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get my kingdom. So uh, he did all those things, and he got his kingdom, and he also got pure devotional service. So that's the mercy of the devotee, that devotees will always just push us to devotional service, no matter what the <coughs> situation is. There are, many, there are many examples of materialists who became devotees by meeting the devotee. There are many examples of impersonalists who became devotees by hearing from devotees. And even Mayavadis who became devotees, like Prakashananda Saraswati was the leader of the Mayavadis in Varnasi, and he met Lord Chaitanya, and Lord Chaitanya spoke to him about Krishna consciousness, about Bhakti, and he became a devotee. And Sarvabhama Bhattacharya was a big impersonalist living in Jagannath Puri, and by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, who also became a devotee. And, uh, Shukadeva Goswami, when he was when he would first appear, uh, even he was attached to the concept of oneness. Even he was uh, an impersonalist. But then he heard uh, uh, he just was born and he wanted nothing to do with family life, nothing to do with the material world. He just took off to the forest to meditate on Brahma. And his father was Shiva Vyasadeva, who had just compiled Shiva Bhagavatam. He was like, no, my son has to become a devotee. So he sent some disciples to find him there in the forest. And they went there and they were reciting some very sweet verses from Srimad Bhagavatam, from Krishna's, uh, the glories of Krishna. And the Shukadeva Swami's mind became attracted. So one of those verses was about how merciful Krishna was to Bhutana. shelter of someone more merciful than Krishna, who gave uh, this she-demon, this demoness who came to kill him, uh, the pos a position in, in the of Vrindavan as his nurse, uh, assistant to Mother Yashoda, taking care of baby Krishna. <laughs> it's like, so she came to kill him. She had no intention to serve him. So you can see that from this, that the quality of Krishna is that he overlooks all the faults. You know, we can have a million faults. Krishna doesn't care. If we have one little tinge of, of, of devotion for him, one little tinge of a desire to serve him, he sees only that, and he founds the spark of that good quality, and he takes us back to Godhead just by dint of that one tiny little, little uh, whiff of a good quality, like Putana. Because when she picked up Krishna to feed him, she was just like, oh, he's so beautiful. <laughs> and, she had, and she had a tiny little hint as she was trying to kill him. Even while she was trying to kill him, she had a little hint of, Motherly affection. And so Krishna gave her a position like, <coughs> like a mother, to motherly affection and spiritual love. So this, uh, this instance proves the glories of devotional service, proves that, it's, that uh, Krishna's pastimes, uh, hearing about Krishna, is higher than liberation. Because even liberated personalities like Shukadeva Goswami are attracted to hear the pastimes of Krishna. There is that famous verse. Atmaramas Chamunayo, Nirgranta Akirukrame, Purvantya Haik Kukim Bhakti, Itam Buddha Guno Hari. That um, Atmaramas, even liberated people who are totally satisfied in self. They're self realized, they want nothing from this world. Nirgranta means they have no interest in this material world. Uh, but even they, perform a haituki bhakti. They perform un, un, unalloyed devotional service. Why? Because itam itam bhutam guno hari. Because hari, Lord Krishna, has such wonderful qualities. Itam bhuta means uh, wonderful, such wonderful guna qualities. They're just attracted to the wonderful qualities of Krishna. So uh, the beginning of nectar devotion, uh, Srila Prabhupada talks about how Sanatana Goswami when he, uh, he came to the liberation, he had asked this question to Lord Chaitanya. He said that after liberation, what, what is to be done? You know, what are the activi activities in the liberated state? Because liberation basically means, if you think of like a, uh, like a thermometer, right? So here's zero, freezing point, right? And so negative, all the negative numbers below zero, that's like, um, 
Or let's say, no, let's not use it. Let's say, um, let's say, okay, let's say the zero point represents like being healthy, like a healthy person, physically healthy person. So if you're sick, then you're below healthy, right? You're a little sick, quite sick, very sick, extremely sick, dying, right? <laughs> okay, so in those stages, all these stages below the line here, you're suffering. So this is material life, right? Material disease, some people are more suffering more. It's all relative, but there are all degrees of suffering. So liberation means you come to the zero, right? You come to, uh, you're not suffering anymore. But, the, but you're also not really like doing anything, you know? You're just kind of like in this uh, limbo state of, okay, material life is over and I'm a soul and I'm happy being a soul. But what, so Sanatana Swami says, when you get to that point, then what? Like, then what? Then what do you do? And then, uh, let says, yes, that's when devotional service begins. So then you start serving Krishna in different ways, and you become active on the spiritual platform, and then it's not just that you're not suffering anymore, but you're actually experiencing ever-increasing bliss as you advance in devotional service. Uh, they also have gurus, and they are also serving to the gurus. And they also do have, have the service mood. They don't know who exactly Krishna is, uh, but indirectly they are supporting him on this. Yeah. Well, the thing is, the Mayavadis they 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 know about Krishna, but they think that Krishna is an ordinary person. That's what Prabhupada was talking about. They think that when Krishna comes to this world. They think that the, the, the supreme, the ultimate truth is Brahman. And, but sometimes Brahman takes on a temporary human form, a temporary material human form, like we have temporary human body, material human bodies, and performs pastimes in this world to attract you know, people who need some material thing to relate to, and then they get interested in Krishna, and, but ultimately they realize that uh, they are one with Brahman, and that that's the goal of life, and they don't need Krishna anymore. That's the Mayavadi like, conception. That's why it's offensive. Because they think Krishna is an ordinary person, and, that, and we you know, make use of Krishna, we worship Krishna while we're you know, becoming uh, purified, and getting free from Maya, but then in the end we don't need Krishna. We don't need anybody, we're just relying ourselves. Saraswati, he says, uh, 
So if you get chicken pox when you're a small child, you just, you know, you, you get this rash for a few days, you get a little fever, it goes away. But if you get chicken pox when you're old, then it can kill you. It's very, in old age, it's very dangerous. So I remember when I had chicken pox, uh, my mother had a friend who had small children, and she was like, she said, she said, oh, can my small children come over and, and play with your daughter so they can also get chicken pox? <laughs> There is a question from uh, a broadcasting. Okay. One of the devotees was asking, like, how can I increase my bhakti? So, like, you covered that. Now you know. Associate with devotees, <laughs> engage in devotional service, and give Krishna consciousness to others, and then we get the merciful glance of Lord Chaitanya. Thank you. 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 Thank you